Hello and welcome. Um, today uh, we are going to have a look at uh, a project that I've been working on recently. Sorry, this is pretty new for me, screencasting and all of this stuff, so I'm still trying to figure it out. All right, so um, I recently got Ableton Live uh, 9 uh, upgraded to it, um, and this is pretty much the first track that I've done with it. Um, so let me show you uh, the different parts um, that I have and how I went about writing it. Um, I made some notes here. So um, this is called uh, Snow Dance. Um, first up, I picked um, this uh, this drum um, drum kit, this drum rack called uh, House Somatic, uh, and I believe that it is um, by Loop Masters, I think. Um, Anyways, so uh, just so that you can kind of get an idea of the sounds. Pretty sweet. Um, what I did do is I did tweak a few things. First up, I added a um, uh, the glue uh, compressor, which is, I believe, based on uh, the master bus uh, the master compressor of an SSL uh, console, um, so it's quite nice. Um, so I added that uh, right at the end. Um, then there are two kicks here, and uh, I did um, add a little bit of LFO and then modulated the LFO rate with a Max for Life device right here called LFO MIDI, which you can assign to any parameter in the rack. So I believe that I assigned it to frequency. Um, so the LFO here, um, the LFO is modulating the frequency of the LFO here, which is pretty cool. And I did that for both kicks here. Um, for the snare, um, I did add a send effect, uh, a send chain, just uh, which is shared by, by several um, drum sounds. Um, and the first item on that is a 12-bit uh, bit reduction plugin, and then a chorus. And I initially, actually, I had this initially thinking about hi hats just to add, make them a little bit uh, sort of thicker and have a little bit more character. Uh, but I ended up adding it to um, even to the snare, for example. So the snare, and then a bunch of uh, hi-hat and hi-hat-like percussion sounds um, here, 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 and here, and then also the snare. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms uh, for drums. I did also add some uh, some fills. I turned on the LFO uh, here um, to modulate the filter. Um, the uh, pan a little bit for the hi-hats and the pitch as well. Um, and I did that for all of the um, hi-hat-like percussion sounds. And then also for the snare. So the filter is being modulated by the LFO, um, which is also modulating the pitch. Slightly, just to add a little bit more variation, make it uh, a little bit less predictable. Um, and then once I had done that, I just went ahead and um, programmed using um, the awesome um, remote scripts for the launch pad by Native Control. I programmed um, these drum beats um, and normally I'll like write a drum beat, then write a bass line, then write the melody or something like that. I'll, I'll switch between the different parts of the songs. But this time, um, I was like inspired, um, by partly, um, by an interview that I saw on the Ableton Live, uh, website by a couple of artists called, uh, Minilog and also a Chilean, um, disco punk band called Panico. I was inspired to just actually just write the beat and just work on the beat. And then until I hadn't finished 
all of the different beat variations. I wouldn't work on any, anything else. Um, so I wrote all of these different beat parts um, and pretty much, uh, I believe, 10 of them. Eight of them initially, I, I know that. Um, so that was that. That was the beat. The next thing that I did, I was tempted to not work on the bass line. Um, and instead, I worked on a pad. So this was the first um, non-percussive kind of sound. Um, this pad is based on a Max for Live synthesizer, um, which I keep closing. Um, and this is, um, it comes, it's in a pack that's available for free. It, it was this guy called Katsuhiro Chiba who did three different um, Max for Live synthesizers. Uh, one of them is based, I believe, on like a, a SH-101. Another one is based on a four operator uh, FM synth, I believe like a TX, TX, a Yamaha TX-812 uh, or something like that. Um, and then this, this was a very slow, so uh, yeah, this was a very slow kind of pad. Let me play you some of the, of the sounds from that. All right, so um, there you go. Uh, I added a 12-bit, uh, um, again, bit reduction, um, a phaser effect, um, and then, why did I add? Oh, I added compressors because I sidechained them. And I had to add two of them because there are two different kick sounds in the um, drum rack. So each compressor in this pad um, is side-chained to one different kick sound. And then I added an auto pad. Um, after that, I think I set up a convolution reverb. Initially, I set up in the actual chain in here, but then I ended up deciding, nah, I might want to use this for some other stuff. So I put this convolution reverb in the first sand channel. Um, it's, again, another Max for Life device. Very nice. Um, I just wanted something really big and spacey. So uh, I believe that it's based on like a, a kind of church-like space. Um, as you can see, there's, uh, I you know, that is really being sent to the convolution reverb and being affected by that. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was that. The next one uh, was a bass line. Um, I took a loop, uh, which sounds initially like this. But uh, what I did is I actually just grabbed the first, um, the, the first note and then uh, use that to compose my own bass lines, um, starting from something very simple like this. And then moving up in um, sort of complexity. Um, with the bass line, I added also a bunch of effects that you can see here. First up, a saturator um, with the high quality setting, which you can access by um, right-clicking or control-clicking on the title bar. 
and then you can get high quality. It adds a little bit of uh, processor load, but it improves the, um, the quality of the saturation emulation. Um, then also the 12 bit reduction to give it like a sort of old sampler sort of sound. Um, a dynamic tube with high quality setting again, which you can access uh, with a control click or right click. Um, then a bass amp, uh, which is um, available. The, so the, the, the saturator, the bit reducer, and the dynamic tube are all available in the standard um, and I believe light versions of Ableton Live. Um, the amp simulator is uh, part of the suite or uh, an add-on um, product. And then finally, um, I added the uh, the glue compressor with a kind of uh, a bass setting. And that kind of really gave it a nice sound, but with, you know, with a little bit of an edge. I didn't want to pretend that, that this was a real bass line. I kind of wanted to make it feel as if it was a sampled bass uh, sound. Um, I still wanted, I liked the loop, the, the bass loop. So then the next channel uh, was just actually, as you can see, the whole loop. Um, I sectioned it into two halves. Um, so this is like the first half here, and then the second half, which is a little bit crazier there. Um, I didn't actually need to do a lot. I did kind of want to roughly match um, the my kind of sequenced bass line with the loop bass line. So I added the the bit reduction and um, the glue comp the glue compressor, as you can see here, and this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Um, the next element that I added was, um, a, a kind of odd sounding, uh, atonal, um, sound, uh, by this sound designer pack, uh, called Heck, H-E-C-K, um, and it's based off a, um, it's a rack, an instrument rack that has the, the, um, AAS uh, instrument that I'm now forgetting the name. Um, let me. Uh, oh, collision. There we go. Um, yeah. So this is a, a collision um, instrument. So it's it's a physical modeling uh, synthesizer, um, which has so part of it is like models the mallet, um, the noise that's created by the impact, and then how the sound, where the sound resonates after the impact. So you have this resonator here, and you have different kinds of resonators, like a beam, a string, a membrane, so like, like a kind of drum or bongo or something, a plate, pipe, tube. Um, so initially, I actually added the, this uh, for these, uh, for this part here. Um, with the um, live bass line, I kind of wanted something a little bit rougher. Um, and for some reason, the, the pad sound, so let me just remind you what that was. So it's kind of very calm. It kind of didn't work with the manicness of the, of the bass loop. So, so I had a beat like this. Line. Then I wanted something with melodic on a higher kind of register, but still pretty crazy. And it was this. So there you go. Uh, so it's kind of like a, a, a has this breathe uh, sort of breath breath like uh, sound. Um, so I added a lot of automation and a lot of effects. So 
the 12 bit just to keep things consistent 12 bit reduction ping pong delay to add some space but then i also did pan it pretty heavily as you can see here um then i added a reverb and a compressor just to keep things in check because with um with physically modeled instruments uh, sometimes they can get a little bit unpredictable um and then i i did send it pretty heavily to um, the convolution reverb, and then I added a, a, a delay as well um, on top of the ping pong delay. Now, I automated the ping pong delay. I did several automation things, which I'll show you here. So the little E here that you can see allows you to access the automation envelopes. And so, face grinder, you, you can you can like automate like mixer functions like volume and, and stuff like that. And then the top one, you can choose actually what your what kind of section you're automating. Is it the mixer? Is it an instrument within that channel? So here we are. I automated the resonator type. Um, I think, uh, as you can see, I was switching between uh, tube and pipe, um, I believe. Um, so one phrase would play out with a pipe resonator, and the next phrase would play out with the tube resonator. Um, then I also automated the ping pong delay, um, to add that kind of analog delay, uh, not, uh, tape delay kind of effect, the warble, the wow and flutter, um, and so I changed the time settings. Um, by the way, to do that, let me show you how you do that. You, again, right click or control click on the title bar. Repitch is what will give you that kind of kind of effect that you that you hear there in the background as you change these uh, beat divisions uh, here. Okay, um, so that was that. Then I re uh, initially I was just going to use this for these two sections here, but then I actually went back and added just like some little eternal accents all over. Uh, the track, which I'll show you um, here. So that was the melodic part, but up here I was going with just very s subtle sounds. The next instrument that I added was the, um, it's part of the retro synths um, sound, park, sound pack, which are uh, uh, pure magnetic released a bunch of samples of vintage synthesizers. Um, and so they, they had a pack called uh, retro synths 80s and then a much larger pack just called retro synths. This is from retro synths 80s. I think it might be based on a sequential circuits uh, or something of that sort, like some 80s polysynth. Anyways, um, with that, again, it was a, an instrument rack. Um, I left it pretty unchanged. I used the built-in effects um, ensemble. I did pan it very heavily, as you can see here, and then sent it all the way to the convolution reverb and then a little bit to the uh, simp the, to the delay again, for space and to kind of keep it consistent with the other more melodic sounds. And this was really melodic, so I'll play you some of these. So there you go. Um, so ultimately, these are the all of the different elements of the track. 
Uh, let me just quickly play through the track and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it and you'll see how it all comes together. Thank you. 